All right, I think it's my turn now. It's good to see everybody here uh, this morning. This is a, a good crowd, and I really appreciate um, uh, everyone here for uh, braving COVID and the uncertainty and all that and being willing to uh, wear a mask and, and all those kinds of things that we find ourselves facing uh, in, in this day and age and, and being here um, and it's, it's nice to have to make an announcement that the, the parking lot's getting uh, too full. And, and uh, so we, we really appreciate uh, the presence of, of everyone here. And not to take up too much more time before the introduction, but just to let you know, the Southeast Institute of Biblical Studies, which used to be the East Tennessee School of Preaching and Missions, is 50 years old which is a, a testament uh, to the eldership uh, that had the vision to start this, the, the original men uh, and women that, that worked so hard to, to bring it to life. Uh, it's a testament to this church uh, from 1971 all the way until now, the elders uh, uh, f during all those periods and, uh, until now. And, all, and, and most of all, it's a, it's a testament to our Lord and, and his uh, grace and mercy and providence in, in, in giving us this blessing of, of being able to participate uh, in the salvation of mankind. And it's a wonderful blessing that he would allow us to do that. And so uh, we, because of COVID, we're going to wait and celebrate this a little more fully next year um, uh, because we wanted as many people to be here as, as could uh, to participate. But I wanted to let you all know uh, uh, that Southeast is 50 uh, years old. And thank you so much for being here. Our speaker this hour is uh, another good friend of mine, Greg Tidwell, and he and his wife, Peggy, have been working with the Fishiger and Kinney Church in Columbus, Ohio for, uh, I don't know, a long, long, long uh, time. Uh, he's not that old, I guess, but uh, he's he's been working there, I think, uh, longer than I've uh, been alive or about that, uh, but I'm only 29, so you can do the math. Um, but I do appreciate Greg so much. He's, he's uh, a wonderful preacher. Uh, he's the editor of the Gospel Advocate. Uh, he does a lot of work with uh, youth camps, uh, both at Fort Hill Christian uh, Youth Camp in Ohio, and he also uh, started one right before COVID hit, but he started one in South Korea that was very well attended uh, as well. And, and the first, or, or at least uh, the only one over there that I'm, I'm aware of. But one, one thing I appreciate so much about Greg is that uh, he uh, looks out for other preachers and gives other preachers opportunities and is such an encourager uh, to them. And, and I would be uh, one, the recipient of, of, of that. And so I appreciate him very much and count him a very good friend. Uh, but please give your attention this morning to Greg Tidwell as he speaks to us on the witness of Jesus, John 5, 30 through 32. Well, thank you, Will, and thank you all for being here. And I appreciate the congregation here at Carnes uh, so much. As we enter into this study, I, I do have to tell you that uh, this past week I was, I was confirming my, my appointment and I, I got in touch with Will and I, I said I was a little unsure as to what you were expecting because I had... Um, you know, some of the lessons are, are class length and others are sermon length. And so I wanted to know, am, am I supposed to speak for 45 minutes or for 20 minutes? And w Will was very gracious and, and he said, well, you know, we'll appreciate however long you speak. And then he added, but you know, 20 minutes would be a whole lot better. And so, as it is, we will not go the full 45. Uh, I do uh, have something I do want to highlight for you. Um, Will mentioned, I do edit the Gospel Advocate. 
um, magazine. Uh, for those of you who subscribe to Gospel Advocate, you may have noticed that we are running behind. Um, the December issue of Gospel Advocate has just come out. Um, COVID hit us very hard as well. Uh, our supply uh, chain in terms of our vendors, our printer, and so forth. And uh, I, I just want to assure you that the owners of the Gospel Advocate are committed to providing every issue that someone has subscribed to. So you're going to be seeing us double up in some months more than one issue. But the current, uh, the December issue, the current issue, who is Jesus? Um, we have some copies in the foyer that you're free to take. But as you look through this, this um, issue, you'll find on page 20 an article, Jesus is the Bread of Life. And that's by Will Hanstein. I appreciated Will contributing to this issue. And I, I really believe it was an outstanding uh, work and I'm glad that it finally got into people's hands. The witness of Jesus, Jesus says, John 5, beginning in verse 30, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I alone bear witness about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who bears witness about me, and I know that the testimony he bears about me is true. Now, as we look at this, Jesus says that if he alone bears witness, it is not true. What he means by that is, under the law of God, Everything was to be established by the mouth of two or three witnesses. If you'll remember during the trial of Jesus, they brought witnesses, and there were many witnesses, but they did not agree. They were not speaking the same thing. The witnesses needed to be in accord, and there needed to be two or three Jesus said of himself, if I'm the only one telling you these things, well, you don't need to believe me. But there were other witnesses, other witnesses regarding Christ. As you go through the gospel accounts, you're going to find multiple times that credible witnesses indicate that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And that's really the point of the whole thing, that he is the Lord. We begin with the witnesses at his birth and his infancy. The angels from heaven announced that he was there. His parents, Joseph and Mary, both received revelation from God, saying that this child who was born of a virgin, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, was the Son of God. The wise men, the shepherds, they all were bearing witness. And when Jesus was brought into the temple, we find Anna and Simeon bearing witness that this is the Messiah. Going forward, we find that God himself bore witness at the baptism of Jesus. The Father spoke from heaven, the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove. The affirmation, the witness that this is the Son of God was there. On the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter, James, John saw they were witnesses, and they received the witness from God. This is my son. And 
As Jesus indicates in the passage we just looked at, the witness of John the Baptist. John the Baptist stood at the end of the long line of, of prophets that reach all the way back to, into the Old Testament. And he was told, he was, it was revealed to him that there was one that was coming that was going to be greater than he was, whose sandal he was not worthy to unlatch. And when Jesus came, he proclaimed, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so when you think in terms of witnesses, there were a lot of witnesses as to who Jesus is and what he has come into this world to do. But in addition to that, we have the witness of Jesus. He himself gives testimony. And one of the questions we need to deal with is, do, do you believe what Jesus has said regarding himself and by extension what he has said regarding us and our relationship to God through him. In Revelation 1 verse 5 he is described as Jesus Christ the faithful witness. The faithful witness. It reaches back into the prophets. Isaiah 55, verse 4. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. It's interesting when you go through the Messianic prophecies, so many of these tie the work of the Messiah who is to come with the church. The Lord's church is not an afterthought. It's not an accident. It's not a convenience. The Lord's church is an integral part of the plan of God. And as we look at the work of the Messiah... We see in so many ways that his work can only be understood as being the head of a great enterprise. He is the head of the body. He is the king of the kingdom. He is the Lord over his church. Some have pulled back from using the expression Church of Christ. They, they like to use more trendy titles, the, the church along the way or whatever it might be. I never seek to apologize for Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the head of the church. And you cannot understand the work of the church apart from Christ, but you also can't understand the role of the Messiah apart from the church. The head is nothing apart from the body, and the body is nothing without the head. The Messiah was to be a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander. He is a witness. And so it is we are to listen to the witness of Jesus Christ. Now, there are many things we could look at regarding the testimony that Jesus has given. He tells us uh, he has not said anything that was not given to him by the Father. So his testimony is true and sufficient and full. Not only what he personally has said, but also what he continued to say through his authoritative spokesman, the apostles. And what he said of old 
as the Spirit of Christ moved among the prophets. So literally everything we find in Scripture from Genesis to Revelation is the testimony of Jesus Christ. But we look specifically at what he said while he was on earth, what is recorded for us in the word of God, and in particular, what he has affirmed about himself and by extension then, what that has to do with us. We come to the testimony of the good confession. In 1 Timothy 6, verse 13, we read, I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in the testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. What was it that Jesus confessed? Now, whenever we talk about confessing, very often we get mired down in the idea of owning up to sins. Now, does the Bible talk about owning up to sins, confessing your sins? Well, yes, it does. Well, if Jesus began discussing his sins, that confession would be very brief. Because he was sinless. The good confession is not a confession of sin. It is a confession of who Jesus is. Before Pontius Pilate, and in point of fact, before the high priest before, he was asked specifically, Are you the Christ? And when the high priest put him under oath by the living God, Jesus said, yes, it's as you have said. Before Pontius Pilate, a man who held Jesus' life in his hands, he was asked, are you the Christ? And Jesus said, yes, it's as you have said. He made the good confession. As we consider the idea of the good confession, it is the confession that Jesus is the Christ. There are religious groups that go through elaborate catechisms. And by the way, I find those very useful in, in training, the idea you would go through a, a set of questions and you would ask people, do you believe? What is this that you believe? But in the Lord's church, we do not have a catechism. We do not have a checklist that we ask people. We do not ask people what they believe about a very wide range of doctrines. If you want to become a Christian, you are asked one question. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? And if you say yes to that, you can be baptized into Christ, showing his burial and his resurrection. You can be a Christian. Now, is there more to learn? Absolutely. We follow Christ and we grow in Christ. But if you do not believe that Jesus is the Christ, you cannot be a Christian. Some years ago, I had a man come who wanted to be part of our congregation. And he wanted to be very clear that he was not a believer. 
but he had been advised that he needed to be part of some group. And the way he expressed it to me was, I don't want to have to believe anything, but I want to be part of all the rigmarole. I'd never heard of our worship services as called rigmarole before, but okay. And then he's, he said, I just want to know one thing. Do you believe that people who don't have faith are wrong? And all I could say was, if I believe that something is right, then I have to believe that if you don't accept that, you are wrong. In particular, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and if you don't believe that, I believe you are in the wrong. He ended up not coming to be part of our assembly. But the question, are we going to affirm that Jesus is the Christ? Now, of course, we focus on the question of the good confession as one becomes a Christian initially. But we need to look more broadly than that. Do we believe the witness of Jesus? Do we believe that the Son of God came into this world? Do we believe that he is gathering a people for his eternal glory? Do we believe what Jesus has said? For those of us who are Christians... The good confession is not something that was once said and forgotten, but it is an ongoing reality. It is the reality that Jesus Christ died for our sins and we are to be committed to him. The good confession that we made before we were baptized is the foundation for everything that we do, everything that we teach, it is the basis of who we are. Because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is everything. And so this morning, I want to ask the question, will you make the good confession? For those of us who are Christians, we are entering into very challenging times. The world in which we live is growing increasingly hostile to religious faith. Are you going to stand firm? Are you going to stand firm when the person in the cubicle next to you at work is a non-believer? Are you going to stand firm when in your neighborhood, your neighbors, your associates are anti-Christian? Are you going to stand firm if it costs you to be faithful to this good confession? Because the good confession is not just something you say in this building in front of a few like-minded people. It is something you live day by day, constantly. It is who you are. And for those who are not yet Christians, there's one question that we need to ask you. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? If you believe, there is no reason for you not to be a Christian. Because by a simple statement, this good confession that we're talking about, if you simply will state that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, 
you can be baptized into Christ, placed underwater, showing his burial, brought back up, showing his resurrection, and receiving every blessing God wants you to have in Christ. But you have to be ready to make the good confession to receive those blessings. If that is your desire this morning, we invite you to come forward as together we stand and we sing.